Lee County Sheriff Carmine Messino. Sheriff, thank you for joining us this morning. What can you tell us about what's happened in your area? Well, I can tell you this is a life-changing event for all of us. We, we tracked that storm up the coast of Florida. It was very unpredictable moving around. We tracked it minute and second. Every minute we watched, and we didn't know where it would hit. Uh, and I will tell you, it came into Lee County strong, and it was slow moving, uh, just a couple miles an hour under a Cat 5, uh, and it hit us, and it crushed us. Uh, we're assessing as we speak. You know, we pulled our resources off and our men and women of law enforcement off at 45 miles an hour sustained winds uh, for safety. And we got back out there last night, our special operations unit and special teams that were formed, uh, and we still cannot access many of the people that are in need. Uh, the waterways, bridges are compromised, and uh, it's a real, real rough road ahead. Have you been able to start any of the rescue and recovery efforts? We have. We have. And I will tell you, throughout this horrific event, uh, you know, Governor DeSantis has been amazing. Uh, his team, the team of leaders uh, at every level, the state has come together. Senator Scott has continuously called. We, we have come together utilizing our resources to get through this event uh, and promise that we'll have everything we have and they have followed through. So uh, it is it is heart wrenching. Uh, I will tell you that we have made some rescues through waterways. Uh, and some we're not able to access. We have thousands of calls on 911 that are prioritized, and we're answering as we speak. What do you know right now about injuries and fatalities, and do you have any sense, any estimate, of how many people are left to be rescued? So while I don't have confirmed numbers, I definitely know the fatalities are, are in the hundreds. Um, there are thousands of people that are waiting to be rescued, uh, and again, cannot give a true assessment until we're actually on scene assessing each scene and we can't access people, that's the problem. Uh, we're, we're accessing the bridges, we're, we're seeing what's compromised and what's not. Uh, and, and this will be a life-changing event for the men and women that are responding. Uh, they're gonna see things they've never seen before. So uh, we're gonna get together, you know, the Floridians are, it's a great state, we have great people here, and everyone wants to help. Fatalities in the hundreds? So far confirmed in the hundreds, uh, meaning that we are responding to events, uh, drownings, uh, and again, unsure of the exact details because we are just starting to scratch the surface on this assessment. Uh, we, we're doing everything that we possibly can. Again, now it's to protect and preserve lives, uh, and we are in full force doing that. You say you're just starting to scratch the surface. How long do you think it's going to take to get up and running again? Well, I'll tell you, again, not knowing what we're faced with, it's very hard to give you an exact number and assessment, but I do know the load is, the, this road is long. Uh, this is not going to be something that's taken care of in the next day or two. This is going to be long term, uh, long term for many reasons, not only just on the preservation of life and protecting and serving the law and order state, but it's going to be on the, the mechanical side, looking at these bridges, looking at roadways, uh, working directly with the CEO of FPNL uh, and all the people coming together to, to make us get back where we need to be. Sheriff, we know you have a long day, long weeks ahead. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're thinking of you and everyone you're trying to save. Amy? Yes, Georgia, that's heartbreaking. Wow, fatalities in the hundreds. And I know amid the chaos, there were dozens of dramatic rescues that were taking place that are still taking place. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is live in St. Petersburg with more on that part of the story. Uh, good morning to you, Rob. Hi, Amy Wells. We just heard the sheriff of Lee County told George earlier that there were hundreds of fatalities. It's important to point out that we did contact the sheriff after that interview, and he said that those fatalities are unconfirmed, and he can't say for sure yet. We also reached out to the governor's office, and the governor is saying that there is a no estimate yet on a fatalities, but there'll be a preliminary report in the next few hours. Meantime, we'd like to highlight some of the heroism and stories of survival that came out during the storm, neighbors helping neighbors, during a horrific landfall. Take a look. Catastrophic. Are you guys okay? And devastating. Hurricane Ian ravaging Southwest Florida, leaving behind submerged neighborhoods and millions left in the dark. Two people requesting rescue, water over their head. The high water levels prompting desperate rescue calls in Lee County. Caller reporting a sinking vehicle, unknown if he's breathing. Caller disconnected. In Fort Myers Beach, Joe Orlandini and his family bunkering down on the third floor of his home after water levels climbed the two floors below.
we weren't prepared for quite a storm of this magnitude. We were hoping it would dodge us. It, it didn't. It got worse. Outside Orlandini's window, mountains of debris from decimated homes collecting in the flood. And there's a bed. I can see. I mean, it's there's doors. This entire home ripped from its foundation. And just 16 miles southwest in Bonita Springs, a group of Good Samaritans rescuing an elderly man from a flooded vehicle, carrying him to safety in waist-high waters. And in Naples, Kimberly Walker telling ABC News about the moments water began to seep into her home. The water got to be a lot more and a lot more and a lot more, and it was just, it didn't matter what you did. The water started coming into my home, reaching about mid-thigh. I knew I had to get out. Walker and her dog forced to swim across the street to a neighbor's home. The center was probably about up to here and running really fast. You can wash your clothes, but I can't replace my dog or my life. But in the it's midst massive. of lost moments of hope, this Australian cameraman putting down his camera to help. Just helping some people through the water here. That's our camera operator, uh, Glenn Ellis, out there. I think you can see yeah. trying to help people who are wading away from their homes. Everyone lending a hand where they could. This was a situation we hope we wouldn't be in, but evacuation orders uh, were expanded quickly. So some people didn't leave. Some people didn't have time to leave. And in some cases, we had areas flood that weren't evacuation zones. That's how powerful this storm was and that surge of water. That 10, 12 foot surge may be gone, but the storm is not. We're looking for a surge and heavy rainfall, not just across Florida, but into the Carolinas with the next landfall scheduled for tomorrow. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.